welcome to the grid. The uh, start of the grid this time is without Scott, but he will be joining us shortly into the show yep. um, from no less than Italy. Yeah, Italy up in the mountains. <clears throat> I think he's up in the mountains right now. It's going to be great. He's and then he's eventually going to be in the water. Yeah, well, yeah. well, ish, ish. He'll right. be he'll be in uh, I guess Venice for the worldwide photo walk. Mm -hmm. So I would say the streets of Venice, but they don't have streets. So it's canals of Venice is where Scott's going to be. He's doing, doing like a gondola walk. It's not really so. It's like a photo paddle. Yeah, yeah, something like that. That'll be cool. <laughs> um, I have never been to Venice, Italy, and uh, so I'm going to have to look at Scott's pictures. So guys, thanks for joining us so much um, this week is a little bit of fun for me because I am a photography nut. I'm a gear nut. I have done a bunch of classes that have come out recently on uh, Kelby One about the gear that's just been rolling out. So like the ADD, I did a class on that and the 5D, 5D Mark, Mark IV Four. That just class came is out. really nice. Yeah. And, we were just uh, talking about that. Yeah, and it was it was a lot of fun. It's yeah. fun getting into this new gear. And so for people that are really into the gear, um, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about visiting with Eric. Uh, Eric Kuna works here at Kelby Media and is a fellow gearhead. Yeah, so we're both gearheads. We sit around a lot of times. We've after. been talking for 45 <laughs> minutes before the show about yeah. some gear, mm -hmm. just all these different developments in the industry and some of the new features and functions yep. and trying to come up with the best way to give you guys some value out of our uh, immersion in the technology. So if you, you could just call it tech nerdiness, tech nerds, absolutely. <laughs> um, so if you have any questions about camera gear, lenses, things like that, uh, we'll do the best that we can. I reviewed uh, I reviewed every DSLR mm -hmm. on the market for four and a half years for B&H, and now I've got my hands on these new cameras coming out from Nikon and Canon, yeah. and uh, more than yeah. happy to talk about that. If you have some questions about them, one of the things that I thought was kind of funny was um, somebody friended me on Facebook, and I was like, yeah, okay, fine. And uh, then the day after I got friended by this person, they sent me a message, a direct message, and said, hey, I was just watching your class on Kelby, and I had some questions about the camera. And they started asking me uh, specific questions about the 5D Mark IV. So um, that was kind of unique. Uh, yeah, but that's awesome. more than happy to do that, that kind of thing. So I think this is an opportunity for us to talk. And we've, we've got a list of some pretty cool things to talk about. But uh, we got to start off with the big soft. thing. Well, the big thing is... Is we already talked about the a little bit worldwide photo Saturday. walk is happening this weekend this Saturday mm -hmm. mostly Saturday there's a few on yeah. Sunday uh, for the stragglers but the uh. worldwide photo walk Scott started this years ago and I've hosted a number of photo walks I've been to a bunch of different photo walks um, I'm traveling this weekend so my ability to be at a specific photo walk is limited uh, but you're actually hosting one aren't you I am, and it's actually a, it's a weird story because last time I was on the grid, I was committed. I was going to the Epcot one. I was taking my daughter. We were right. going to go to the Epcot one. And then that night, I come home and my wife says, hey, you know, I found a Florida resident rate on this uh, cruise, you know, and I was like, well, you know, we need to have, we haven't had a vacation in, in months and months. Sure. And, um, and we were like, hey, well, let's, let's go do that. And then it happened to be that we we're going to pull into Nassau the day of the photo walk. So I looked and I didn't see one in Nassau. So I was like, hey, I'll start one up, see what happened. I was like, nobody's going to sign up. Nobody's going to come. I got like 46 people in Nassau signed up to go. I, I so think that's great. And cool. you, know, you know why I think that's extra great is because it's a vacation. You're going on vacation with the family. But... You can write off part of the vacation. Oh no, I'm not. This, this is, is all volunteer related. stuff. This is all. That's oh, all volunteer oh, okay. stuff. Okay. That is, I'm not going to write off any of that. You should. I wish I could. I, I'll be your tax <laughs> tax attorney for this year. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the photo walk is is fabulous. I remember. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say five or six years ago, I did a quick tips and tricks thing, and uh, just a quick tips about the photo walk. And the first year, a lot of people did the photo walk. They did it as a, hey, I'm going to be hanging out with 50 fellow photographers right. walking around wherever, you know, this city, that city, this countryside. Uh, I'm going to be walking around with these people. So I want to show off my camera gear. <laughs> there are those people there. Yeah. And if you're one of those people, that's okay. I'm, I'm not making any judgments about you. But 
if you're thinking this is going to be a great place to go and show off your camera gear to fellow photographers, you're going to hate that about an hour in you're looking around <laughs> all this gear. And well, no, uh, you just let them, you know, borrow it and carry it around. There you go. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know if I, I don't know trust if everybody to borrow those gear, lenses. Yeah. But um, the first year, I'm walking around with the big bazooka 70 to 200 mm -hmm. and the biggest body that I've got and uh, tripod. Mm -hmm. So I got that whole thing. Next year, 50 millimeter lens on my DSLR with mm -hmm. the with the holster, the spider holster clip. Yeah. That's it. No. That's it. That's all you need. Yeah, that was me the second well, year. Well, you know, so it's really cool. Like, one of the things, if you're going to the photo walk and you are, you know, a professional photographer, you do this professionally. What's nice about the photo walk is, you know, trying to challenge yourself with like an assignment or something like that. Sure. Like literally take a piece of gear that you usually don't shoot or take a lens that you usually don't shoot with and challenge yourself to like make an image with that lens. Right. Or like, you know, um, maybe take a camera that you normally wouldn't take to kind of push the limits or go, I'm only shooting wide today or I'm only shooting tight today, you know, just so you can kind of get that practice and that experience you know, that you normally wouldn't get because you're on assignment or you're doing something for somebody where they have a specific need. It's kind of cool to, you know, take the opportunity. Plus, you know, it kind of pushes you to, you know, look at the world a little different. I think that's a great idea. You know, and, and I think that the cool thing about the photo walk is that it's there for every level of participant. Mm -hmm. So if you're more advanced and you don't shoot with a particular lens and you bring that lens and you challenge yourself with that, or you have a particular, uh, uh, self-assignment. That's a great way to go. Yeah. At the same time, there are going to be people that will be at this photo walk that are new and shy and kind of mm -hmm. quiet. What I used to do at the beginning of my photo walks, when I'm doing a, a quick little debrief, hey, we're going to walk from here to here to here. We're going to have lunch over here. Uh, this is my path. I'm planning on going here. There are some alternate routes. So I tell people about the whole thing. And of course, it's all laid out on maps really well on the website. Uh, but one of the things that I would do is I would say, are there any experienced photographers here that would be willing to help somebody that's brand new? And I would get those people to raise their hand first. Right. And you'd get five or six people that would raise their hand out of a group of 50. And then I would say, okay, now are there any people that are brand new that have never, that, that are yeah. kind of wanting to learn right. from one of the people that just raised their hands. And I, I would say, okay, now the original people, would you keep your hands up so that you can get a student yeah. or two to walk over and, and That's an so awesome you end idea. up having a coaching session. Yeah. And uh, I would say that if you're not doing that as a photo walk leader, you might consider it. And if you're showing up at a photo, now there is no guarantee you will be taught or trained. There's, th right, that's yeah. not part of this. This is a, this is a friendship, social fellowship, event. social thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, it that's is, a really cool idea, though. It is a great, a really good idea. So, yeah, definitely. Um, that's something that I think a lot of leaders, you know, it'd be great to, you know, because that's one of the things when you're out on those photo walks. A lot of times when I'm out there, it's kind of a mix. It's really kind of. It is. Yeah. And I've been out a lot of times and people have their iPhones or their Android devices or point and shoot. Sure. And, you know, I mean, they, they're just trying to get into photography and it would be great to have somebody who could kind of coach them along. Yeah. There, there is every level of person mm -hmm. there. And, uh, I, I think you'd have a lot of fun with those kinds of things. And then of course, at each photo walk, uh, there's the opportunity for a contest to a degree, right? Mm -hmm. And the photo walk leader for each city then looks over the images that are submitted by the photo walk people from that day. And they do need to be images shot that day on the right. photo walk. You can't pre-scout and <laughs> then plan some of them. I, I, there were some people trying to pull that stuff off in yeah. years past, uh, but it needs to be from that day. And then you do uh, whatever it is and submit your image, and then the photo walk leaders in each of the cities then submit to the uh, the contest. Yeah, next week we'll have the details of the contest uh, up where you can enter and, and do all that stuff. But right now it's focused on getting people, uh, you know, out to the walks, having a safe walk, uh, making sure people, you know, register for the walk. We have we have over twenty thousand registered right now for the walk. The official and, site is uh, worldwidephotowalk.com. Okay. Yes, and they can go right there and sign up. And like I said, you got 20,000 people already signed up. Um, we have a th over 1,000 cities, which, you know, I mean, is we've, we've got more this year than we had last year. Uh, there's probably one in your area. And, you know, uh, we actually have a new uh, uh, contest category this year, uh, video contest. 
which that's is great. really cool for me. I'm a video guy. I mean, well, I yeah. For this. So uh, it's really cool to see like having a video contest. And then Canon's giving away a really cool video creators kit with like all the doohickeys and all the stuff you need. It's so. a, it's amazing to see how this um, this fellowship, this worldwide fellowship event has just grown over the years. Let's say hi to some people. Uh, Joshua Vassar says, hey, from Alaska. Uh, and let's see. Bill Turan Bill, Bill loves you. Yeah, says, love you, Larry. Yeah, you thank go. you very much. Um, Dallas Knoxville says, walking in Knoxville. That's great. Um, Demetrius Psychod <laughs> Psychodakis. How do we find the times? The, yep. Now, are the walks listed? Oh, yeah. The walks are listed, and then inside the walk, you'll have the time that the leader has decided to, you know, the window. So when you find a city, you go in there. And the maps the will time. be there. Yeah. So, like, you go find the city you want, and then uh, you go in there, and the times are right there in the walk. Okay. And they vary by city by city. It's based on what the leader has. And uh, Willie Ford says, hi from Ireland, Scott. Uh, Scott's not here yet, but he will be soon. And... Um, oh, friends asking if I got any tips to shoot video. I got tons of tips, but I don't know, think we got enough time. So yeah, um, <laughs> guys, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, a we're gonna, we're gonna do uh, a few more of these greetings. Thank you guys for uh, adding these comments. We're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back from I think the break, we'll have Scott, when we come back, we're gonna I, we're gonna touch so. base we'll with see. the other side of the planet. <laughs> Stick right. around. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Steve Hansen. I'm a professional landscape photographer. And if you were like me, early in your career, you were pulling your hair out saying, how am I gonna get my images into the hands of my collectors? So in this class, we're gonna go over every aspect of sales. We're gonna go from pricing your images to the various ways to market your images, to the art of salesmanship, and not only getting your potential clients to purchase your prints, but to believe in you as an artist over the long term so you can have a lasting relationship with your collectors. So check it out exclusively at kelby1.com. Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here and have you ever seen like a really beautiful photo but then the photographer like put some type over it or put some type beside it and the type looks so bad that it like destroys the photo. You've seen it, I've seen it, we've all seen it. It's just a sad, sad thing, but it doesn't have to be that way. That's why I created this brand new class called Designing with Type. You're gonna learn the fundamentals on how to design with type and you're gonna learn four important things. Number one, you're gonna learn a bunch of cool Photoshop type features, which is always handy. Number two, you're gonna learn exactly what not to do and why. Number three, you're going to learn some formulas and recipes that you can use every time to create great looking type. And number four, I'm going to share some of my most useful and favorite fonts. So check out my brand new class, Designing with Type. It's exclusively here at Kelby One. Christy from Shark Pixel here, and I am so excited to talk to you about my new upcoming class. It's all about retouching hair. You're going to learn how to change color. You're going to learn how to extract from the background how to take care of flyaways, and at the end of the class, we're gonna get super advanced and start creating our own custom hairbrushes so that you will never pull out your own hair again next time you have hair to retouch in Photoshop. So check it out only on kelbyone.com. Hi everybody, Mike Cabasi here. Check out my new class, Flat to Flattery. We capture images with a two-dimensional tool. I'm gonna to show you how to light so that your images look three-dimensional. We're gonna teach you how to uh, create depth in your pictures, some texture in the background, how to uh, put a key highlight on the hair, and uh, make your images look flattering. Check out my new class on Kelby One, Flat to Flattering. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. I am so happy that uh, we've been able to connect with our friend in Italy. Not quite in Venice yet, but will be this weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the guy that's supposed to be in this chair, but he's traveling the world, his name is Scott Kelby. Hey, hey there he is. Hey. It's hey, guys. Great to see you. Uh, it's good to see you. It's good to be able to hear you this time. <laughs> all right. All right. So say what's going on besides shaky cam. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, so, oh, that's worse. Hi. So uh, it's 10 o'clock, 10, 15 at night here in Italy. And uh, we just flew in today and we are very tired. <laughs> we're, we're trashed. Um, and outside of that, uh, we're good. I'm here with my brother, Jeffrey, my older brother. And uh, we've been having a very fun time, mostly just kind of scouting out stuff. Um, we're going to get up early and do some shooting tomorrow, but, uh, so far we just been driving through the, either the Dolomites mountains or the Dolomites mountains. We can't decide how it's pronounced, but, uh, uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's the Italian Alps and they're just absolutely stunning. Just like uh, better than I imagined, just really, really nice. And it's beautiful, gorgeous weather. No clouds in the sky, so I couldn't get any decent shots tonight. <laughs> the, the sky was just, it's blue, but it's just like nothing. So uh, so I didn't really get anything worth a darn today. But uh, here, can I change my camera angle? Can I do this here? Let's tip it back. There we go. <laughs> so this way you can see the roof, roof of my hotel room. That works. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody so, yeah, it's got yeah. A, good. It's got a beautiful roof. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Okay, so one quick question as an aside. Has Jeff been practicing his Italian accent? <laughs> well, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he will be driving. So we have we have a Mini Cooper rental car, right? A little Mini. And we're driving. He'll just go, hey, cazzone. <laughs> <laughs> As we're driving, to, I'm like, you're just yelling names of food now. It's just food. It's not even a real, it's not even a real Italian word. Scott's brother Jeff but, is uh, brilliant at accents. Just he can he can oh, riff yeah. on any accent in the world. <laughs> oh, he's the king. He absolutely is. Yeah. So hey, do I still have, do I have a little light shining over my face or anything? No, it looks mm. it looks fine. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a beautiful hotel room. Anyway. <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about your photo walk this weekend in Venice. So how is that going to work? It's it's There's no streets. Well, that's yeah, we were, we were kind of debating that. We are like, are you going to just gondola walk or something? No, there are streets. There's no cars. <laughs> there are walkways everywhere. There are literally walkways everywhere. It is a walking town. There's just no taxis. If you want a taxi, it's a water taxi. Literally, wow. you take a boat, not a gondola. Gondolas are for tourists. Everyday people use the water taxis. And they're just like big buses in the water. And they're not very pretty. And they're not very expensive. Okay. Do, do, they, have, so, uh, do they have Uber? <laughs> they have Uber, Uber water, water taxis. taxis. Uber water. Man, they should. They absolutely should. But um, no, they, they – you can get around by water pretty well, but it's a, it's a walking city, really. You, you're in a walk. So we're we're starting our walk in St. Mark's Square, which is the very famous you know square that you always see when they show Venice. And um, then we're going to just basically walk for two hours and wind up at a restaurant. And uh, I've got a guy here in Italy that's helping me put some stuff together here. And uh, that's it. We're, I've got a full group. I've got about 50 photographers. And... Uh, that's one of the things we'll be working on tomorrow is making sure the restaurant is going to let us come in there with 50 people. You know, you'd think that a restaurant would be like, you're bringing 50 people for lunch? Awesome. They're like, we can't handle 50 people. <laughs> <laughs> so Everywhere you go, they're like, 50 people? What are we going to do? You know. So uh, we don't have to have 50 people at one table either. It's just, you know, 50 people in general. But um, – that's basically, you know, the, 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 what the walks are all about. It's getting together, walking around, having fun. And, uh, you know, I haven't been to, uh, to Venice since 2008. So, uh, my daughter was just a little tiny girl in a stroller right now. She's big. <laughs> she's like fifth grader now rocking the world. But, uh, I can't, man, so, I can't, uh, I can't picture Kira that old. She is just <laughs> always permanently a little bitty girl to me. Oh, she's not. No, no. She's, 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 she's taking on the world, man. She's rocking it. So, um, anyway, so she is, um, uh, she was just a little, we're literally pushing her in a stroller. That's uh -huh. how young she was when we were there. So anyway, so now we're, um, uh, we're cruising around, uh, Venice taking pictures and stopping at every gelato stand. So it takes us a <laughs> long time to get anywhere. And, uh, I'm really excited about it because, 
I very rarely do you get to go back to some place. You know, it's like you shoot some place and you're there once and you go, you see all the things you'll you want to do next time. Like when you go through your images, you're like, oh well, next time I would do blank, blank, blank. Well, this is my next time. So I'm very excited. I I specifically chose to go back to Venice because of that reason, because I uh, there's a lot of things I left on the table that I didn't get to do. And so, I, you know what happened last time? I got sick. The day before we got to Venice, I got really sick. I got... Well, there's, just, there's I still time. Like a flu. Yeah, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have, yeah, I have I a question for really you because sick. Eric and I were talking be before we connected with you today. We were talking a little bit about the potential of things like self-assignments. Do you have a self-assignment planned for this, uh, for this photo walk? I don't I don't really for as far as what I'm going to shoot to be honest with you Larry I, I just spend my time meeting and talking to everybody I don't take many shots on the walk the first ones I used to but now I just want to meet everybody and talk and you know I take right. so few shots on the photo walk I bet the last photo walk I didn't take 25 30 shots so it's all about if the I selfies took... now <laughs> Me yeah I don't, I, don't, I don't take any selfies of me zero uh -huh. I, don't, I don't have a selfie on my phone I hate selfies. <laughs> okay. I do. I just, I can't. I don't mind other people taking them because other people are more photogenic than me. Look, look. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not crazy about seeing pictures of me. I'm not crazy about seeing pictures of me after Darby touched him for four hours. Can you imagine <laughs> what a selfie would be like? So, uh, yeah, I'm not a selfie guy at any level. But, um, I don't really give myself assignments. I just kind of walk around and, you know, look for, if there's something interesting, I'll certainly shoot it. And if there's something really, really interesting, I'll go back and shoot it the next day. That's a good plan. a few days in Venice. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, sometimes things just, just happen, but I don't really consider myself a street photographer. I consider myself a travel photographer. So I, I look for different things with travel than I do. I'm not, I think a street photographer, a lot of it is trying to capture a moment. Sure. You're trying to capture right. someone in a gesture. Or like Jay Maisel says, yeah, you know, Jay. trying to capture light or gesture or color. I'm trying to take pictures that make you want to go to that place. Like I'm trying to pick pictures that you'd go, oh, my gosh, I want to go to Venice. That's So I'm looking at it from a completely different angle and a completely different view. But a photo walk is really pretty much like a street, you know, kind of a street photography event. So I'll be talking to people. I'll be chatting. I'll be eating Italian food. Hey, look, there's some Italian food. But that's what's Let's cool about there. the photo walk is that it really is you can do all different types types of photography. So you can, you know, do the travel photography if you're into that or the street photography or detail. There's just so many different things you can do on a photo walk. Oh, that, yeah. You know, oh, so and I, I wind up doing architecture. Yeah, exactly. I do architecture mostly. But yeah. some people will shoot fo portraits of people and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I look back. I would recently look back at some of the stuff I've done on the photo walks. I mostly do an architecture. I'm just shooting buildings and signs and things that look interesting and stuff but yeah i'm not in the mindset of shooting like travel when i'm doing that because it is a it's a different mindset when you're thinking right. you know i want to show stuff that makes you want to go there so you i would shoot a lot of gondolas <laughs> if i was doing it a, like if you sent me on assignment to venice you know you're i'm going to shoot a lot of little tiny canals i'm going to shoot you know a lot of gondoliers i'm going to shoot a lot of the food uh you know i'm going to shoot a lot of you know cool hotels and different stuff i'm going to shoot the things that would make you go wow i want to go there so that, that the route that i'm taking on my photo walk which is still becoming is congealing uh, <laughs> is uh uh is is basically just taking you just through some interesting th areas that I think will be interesting to shoot. The problem is I'm not actually an expert on Venice. I've been there once. So, well, so you're twice. not, you're not an expert yet. <laughs> well, maybe by, by Tuesday I'll be rocking. <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay. So stick around and we'll have a second photo walk on Wednesday. <laughs> The when the, on Wednesday the photo walk would have to be on an airplane. Oh. We'll walk to the restroom. We'll walk up to the front, and we'll go back to our seats. <laughs> um, very boring. Quick question about your gear. What are you walking around with this year? So uh, it's not mine, but I did borrow. And let's. I have to how to explain borrow. <laughs> I have a Canon 5D Mark IV. 
So Canon let me borrow it to go to Iceland, and they never sent me the email that says we need it back. <laughs> and, so, and so I was talking to my contact at Canon who let me borrow it, and I said, hey, just wanted to let you know I'm taking that, that Mark uh, 5B Mark IV to, to, uh, to, to Italy. And he goes, you didn't send that back? Not yet. <laughs> and I go, it's too late now. I'm going to Italy. What can I do? I have no control over these things. And he's like, send it back when you get back. I will. So, so shoot, yeah. 5D Mark IV is my, my body. Now, because I specifically came here to take pictures, I'm not on vacation. So because I came, like, if I was on vacation, it would be my wife and I or my wife and the kids. I just take one lens. But because I knew I was going to be here, like I brought a tripod and I brought a 14 millimeter. That's going to be probably my main lens is a 14 millimeter because I'm going to be shooting some interiors for my book while I'm here and stuff. Um, then I, I took a 24 to 70 because we're out here in the, in the Dolomites, you know, mountain range. Sure. And so I brought up some of those. It's not my favorite lens. It's my least favorite lens, but it actually works pretty well for this kind of stuff. And, uh, and then finally I, I took my 70 to 200. Oh, wow. So I have more than I want to have with me. It's more than I would take on vacation by a long shot. So, but what, because I came here to take pictures, and you have what, a, what would I be that? What tools. would be that lens that you would take if you only took that one lens? I would take a twenty-eight to three hundred. Yeah. I would try to take a uh, just one lens that does it all. That goes from wide angle. Right. Now, if you're on a crop sensor lens, I would take an eighteen to two hundred. Right. But I need something that goes wide to long. So that would that would be it. If if. That was my thing if I was going to be on vacation. Because when I'm on vacation, I want to enjoy the town. I want to enjoy the time with my family. You know, I, I, I'm going to do all the stuff that we would normally do on vacation and just take pictures while I'm there. Here I came to take pictures. Kind of like when I went to Iceland a few weeks ago. I went to Iceland to take pictures. So it was like, you know, but, you know, I, I, if my wife is there and all, then it's, it's a different mindset, too. Uh, but it's awesome having a wife that really loves photography. <laughs> sure. <laughs> because it used to be like I would go, honey, can you wait? I just want to get this shot. And she'd be like, okay. And she was always incredibly patient about it. Now I go, honey. And she's like, I just need two more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's taking all kinds of pictures. I'm like, okay. you know. But I get it. And she's incredibly patient when I was doing that. But. You know, and we, we have a joke that we say, like, when I was in Australia last year with my photo walk, like, if if Calibra would walk away from us, like the group, we'd go, oh, no, she spotted <laughs> something. She spotted something. What is it? What is it? Because she's got a really good eye. So she would go, like, wander off and we see she's gone. We don't worry about her. We don't go, oh, no, she's lost. We go, oh, no. She's she's snaking us. She's got some really good shot that we don't know about that she saw off the distance. So we have to, we have to keep an eye on her all the time. A dingo, a dingo took my wife. I, <laughs> a dingo ate my baby. Yeah. So um, okay. So I like the twenty four to one hundred five. That's that's in my that's, that's that's in my bag, and I'm walking around with that. With the uh, I have a Canon sixty. So, so Larry, yeah. you know what? I would use it. I would use a twenty-four one hundred five. It's not quite as long as I like. Sure, but it's better than a twenty-four to seventy. A twenty-four to seventy. Every time I go out to seventy, I go. I need a little oh, more. Just a little yeah, more. So, but I, don't, I don't. I don't own a twenty-four to one hundred five. So. Okay. Well, I have the last one, the new one, the twenty-four to one hundred five. No, you have a, the the you new have one of, a twenty-four to one hundred five or one twenty. No, I have a twenty-four to one hundred five. 105. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay, L, yeah. Gla L glass. I have that. Yeah, so the, the new oh, 24 to 105. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not walking around with a 5D4, though. So uh, it's my, it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> but you have one. I don't even have I'm one. Borrowing, you can yeah. borrow a lens or something while you're there, Larry. Okay, go take a lens. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I I'll like. I'll never know. I like the new 24 to 105. It's uh, it's a little cleaner around the edges of the uh, the image area. Very nice for a 5D Mark IV when you have 30 plus megapixels. Mm. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, one of the things that Canon announced, I don't know if it's shipping yet, was a 16 to 35, I think they announced. Spectacular. Just... Spectacular oh, lens. Have you tried it? Have you tried it? Well, I've seen stuff from Canon Explorers of Light. I actually got to do um, 
a live show on the day of the introduction of the 5D4 and right. uh, was talking with uh, some explorers of light and, and saw images and they're raving about it. It's like a uh, it's like a prime lens with all those different focal lengths. Oh, wow. Because I, I, the old one was pretty good. I love the focal length. But like you said, it wasn't as sharp around the edges. Yeah. And supposedly the new one is like absolutely tack sharp. Yeah, yeah, and all the new coatings and everything, they're getting rid of any kind of uh, mm. ghosting and flare. It's pretty amazing coding. stuff. Mm. <laughs> nano coding. Mm. Hey. I'm going to have some nano coding with dinner tomorrow. Hey, Scott, uh, big news on the uh, donations. We're, uh, it seems like between the T-shirts and the uh, generosity, we're like halfway there. On the donations for the photo right, op. right, yeah, we're yeah. we're ahead of last year by yeah, way ahead, yeah. So donations are going oh, good. T-shirt news. sales are going really good. I just got my T-shirt in the mail. Got uh, one for my daughter as well. So it was really cool. Eric sent me a picture of his daughter in his T-shirt. <laughs> she She's so it. adorable. Yeah, she loved it. That was good. Yeah. So, so since the beginning, you've been supporting the uh, the orphanage. Since the beginning, yeah, of pretty much. Walks. Well, I think it was the second. It was the second. Was second it? Walk. Started it. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to give credit to Rob Jones from Towner Jones Photography up in the D.C. area because he was like, you know, hey, you guys should sell some shirts. And, you know, because he knows that we that my blog, you know, the people that read my blog support the orphanage. And he was like, you guys should do some shirts. And to this day, every year, Rob sets up and runs that store. Wow. And so it's, yeah, it's a lot of work and it's a pain in the butt, but he does it and he really enjoys it. And so, you know, he adds a lot every year by selling those T-shirts. It takes that number up by quite a bit because oh, yeah. 100% of the profits go to the orphanage. So this year we used, you know, generosity.com, which Mr. Kuna, the right there, came up with the idea and helped set that and arrange that all up. And that I think it's really helped. I mean, you make it easy for people to, uh, for, to do, uh, be able to, uh, donate and, and also kind of see where we're at and everything. I think that helped a lot. I think it made it easier for people. Oh yeah. And it's, it's, it's obviously already had an effect. Well, the, um, uh, talk a little bit about the orphanage. You've got ties with these folks going way back and, um, uh, oh, yeah. they, they've made some incredible strides. I remember when they were just getting started and the kinds of things that previous donations have added to their experience. Well, yeah, they started off with an, an empty plot of land. So Molly really, she, you know, sold everything, moved over there and uh, built this this orphanage. There was nothing there, nothing. And so now I thought it was 31 kids, but Eric was saying they actually ha house more kids than that now. Yeah, they're almost, they also I think she feed, said we got almost 50. Almost 50, yeah. wow. They feed a lot of kids. They, they give health care to a lot of kids. So the pressing thing we're trying to get them this year is they need a bus. They need a, a bus to get the kids to school. They need a bus to take the kids to the doctor. They all kinds of, they, I mean, you can imagine with 50 people, you know, you don't just sit around the house all day and go, what are we doing today? You know? <laughs> so they need to get them around. So they and it's not going to be like a luxury bus, you know, but it's like, you know, we would, that, that's, that's, I would imagine that all this money is going to go towards that bus. Um, and, and so that's, that's a big need. But of course, can you imagine having even one day to feed 50 people, even just one day having to feed 50 people. And the challenge is that you got to clothe 50 people. You have to house 50 people, right? You have to take care of, of medical. I mean, there's just, it's a never ending need, you know? So, but one of the things that's cool that they're doing is they've been really working the last few years because you don't want to have a situation where you just have to, you're dependent on everyone giving you money all the time. So they're working on becoming self-sustaining. So they're doing a lot of different stuff. First, they started this thing where they're, they're making handbags and selling them and they sell them here in the United States and it helps to raise money for themselves. They also are trying to do ecotourism where uh, you come over there. Cause I mean, they're in Kenya and it's very, very beautiful. And they're trying to kind of build a, uh, a thing where, well, the kids, a lot of them start off there very young, but they're there for years. They have nowhere to go. It's not like you're 12 and they go, okay, well, you're 13, you're out the door. You yeah. know, it's like, but they get to a point where when they are adults and they have nothing to do. So now they're having, they're trying to create this business around it to where they, you're not just turning the kids back out on the streets and you're, you're having them work 
and help this ecotourism that they're trying to do. So th they're doing a lot of really smart things to help sustain the, the orphanage. But at this point, they still desperately need our help. And so that's, that's why we do it. And the people on my blog literally helped build that that orphanage from scratch. And so over the years, we do different things. We raffle off guitars and we do, I've written a book and all the proceeds from this uh, this book goes to uh, to them. So it just, we try to do things all during the year because it's, it's a never ending need at this point. But I think at some point they're going to be mostly self-sustaining. But, you know, it's, when it, Molly has a tremendously big heart, yeah, and there'll never there'll never be a time where she goes, oh, that's enough, that's enough, kids. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, yeah. she's just she she can't help it. But you know, when you're called to do that, it's it's a really awesome awesome thing. And you know, she's dedicated her entire life to helping orphans, and it's really very admirable that she does that. And so, you know, so we try to do our part over here which is you know people on my blog and you guys and the whole nine yards and all and she just you know takes that and and uses it in amazing ways that's it's really a, a cool side effect of what's going on with the photo walk there's already so much neat stuff happening with people getting together yeah. around the world and having something in common to share and then this side benefit of the charitable organization. Hey, Scott, um, I, I don't want to shift topics terribly, so uh, I, but I do want to involve some of our viewers. There, we've got some great questions coming in, and so sure. uh, some people have some questions for you and some comments about the photo walks in general. Um, one I see here is Jonathan Stoop 31. Any tips on how to take video when it's pouring rain? DSLR covers. Uh, so I, I'm not sure that's video specific. That's video or stills. Yeah, video or stills. If it's yeah. pouring rain, what do you suggest? First off, it's Johan, not oh, Jonathan. I'm sorry. It's Johan. He's a regular. We must treat him with the respect that regulars deserve. <laughs> Hi, Johan. Okay. Sorry about that. So, well, I mean, I've I've seen people do all kinds of things. Uh, I've seen people literally rig uh, a tripod with their camera on top and an umbrella and literally shooting, you know, video under an umbrella. Now, there are all kinds of uh, rain gear that you can get. Mm -hmm. There is a company that makes, uh, I think it's called Rain Sleeve. Mm -hmm. and oh, they yeah. are so yeah. unbelievably inexpensive. And they're basically custom designed baggies, <laughs> right? Yeah. That are, but they're very clever. They're very, you get two of them in a package for I think six bucks from B&H. Two of them, and you, you you can choose you know big lens, little lens, what kind of lens you have, and it covers your lens, covers your body, and you can reach up inside and control the things. Now you can go all the way up to three hundred dollar rain gear, right? I think Tank makes this really, really, really nice high end stuff, but uh, I keep those. And in fact, I was I took one to the game the other day. I was uh, shooting the bucks, uh, and. Uh, Rams game on Sunday and I had rain gear with me. And as it turned out, we left the field for thunder, but never had to really put it on. It never rained enough. Mm -hmm. But uh, my, the only thing I can say is depending on your gear, you're going to need something to, uh, to, to protect it. There's a lot of gear today that is sealed for weather. And if it's not, you know, if it's just a light rain or something, you're probably okay. Um, just don't wipe your gear. Don't take a big cloth and wipe your gear. You have to <laughs> pat it. No, yeah. you do because if you wipe it, it pushes it in. in the cracks, but they yeah. are—they're weathered sealed. They actually have seals for you to be able to shoot in that kind of weather. So uh, that's you know, it, it, you know, like the five D Mark IV is sealed, and there's the five, <laughs> when the X's are sealed, and there's a lot of really nice cameras that are sealed for shooting out in bad weather because some of the best photos come in bad weather. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're not because hey, I had a blue sky today, and I—I I didn't get dink. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Killed yeah, we, I've, today. I've used that. This, I used the same thing when shooting the rain video sleeves. the rain sleeves because yeah. I like them because it's almost like disposable. Sure. Because you know a lot of times when you're oh, yeah. you know out and you're just disposable. But now I mean trash bag will work. <laughs> I've shot sure. with a trash bag before. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, but Eric, uh, the, I just re re remembered the the company that makes them is called Optech. Yeah. So it's O P T E C H. Yeah, you buy them at, at B and H. Rain H. So you get them, you know, that's where I get them. Yeah, B and H. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they're they're honestly they're great. They're I keep seeing Twitter things come across my screen. I'm like, 
swipe. If you see my finger go up there, that's I'm swiping off the uh, Twitter there. <laughs> um, but, uh, we have another comment. That, that's a, Matt, real, Chern- yeah. Matt Chernitsky. Did I pronounce that right? Or is it? Oh, Matt. Yeah. Hey, Mar- yeah. Mar- yeah. Mar- yeah. <laughs> it's no. it's Johan Charnitsky. There you go. Uh, says, come on, tell, you're telling me that Scott doesn't have a tripod for this. So are you walking with the tripod or no? I think he's oh, commenting on walk? his photo video walk. work right now where he doesn't oh, have his... No. Oh, you think I, it's about I, that? I have, he's, I, wait, wait, wait. I have a tripod. He says Scott doesn't have a tripod for this. And Eric thinks it's about this show that you don't have a tripod In for this show. And I yeah. think it's about the photo walk, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not using one for the photo walk, but uh, what I'm doing here, I think, is it's not the camera's not moving, right? No, it's fine. No, it's good okay, now. Uh, it's good now. In that case, I'm using a tripod. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's that I, new laptop tripod, right? I like, yeah, see, it's my laptop. Whoa. I, whoa. I like the ceiling backdrop. That's awesome. <laughs> I know. It's very, very hip. Yeah, so you I know love what those we're going to do. Those curtains are awesome. So, I know. This is actually a very nice room. We're, we're at an awesome little hotel in the middle of nowhere. So uh, here's what we were going to do. This is my brother and I worked this out. I was going to take a picture from today. We were going to put it full screen, and he was going to put it behind my head. And it was uh, it would be like, you know, and at some point you guys would go, isn't it nighttime there? Uh-huh. And then you would move it, <laughs> and I'd be in my hotel room. But we're so tired we lost interest. I, I can understand. Yeah, you guys have been uh, traveling and burning the candle at both ends, and you have to get ready for the photo swim. So let's see what else. <laughs> hey Scott, um, you know you were uh, he was out. You were out at, um, in Iceland, and Terry was driving or flying that drone around. Did you see that new drone that uh, DJI came out with? Yes. Isn't that oh awesome? Oh my gosh! I tr- I tried to order it. It's awesome. So I went. I went. I put it in the cart. I did the whole night thing. I said bye, and it would go to an error. Ugh. I could not. They must. They go must be an agent. Buy it. Rushed. You buy it at B&H. Yeah, I probably should. Yeah. But you know what? I want to buy insurance. Uh, How do I buy insurance if I buy it from B and H? Maybe there's a way. I don't know. Gosh. But sure, B and H will find a way to sell you insurance. I need right? insurance on a drone. <laughs> I need it badly. This is like I will not buy a drone if I'm not insured. But how so. cool is that? It like it folds up. It's like this. I mean, it's not. It's, it's amazing. It's about this size. Yeah. It's like it. it's just, yeah. Yeah. Fold oh, up. Dude, fold I'm up. Put in. it in the bag. I'm in too. Oh, I am all in. Are you kidding me? I'm. I. I cannot wait to get that. But no, uh, I was almost yeah, leaning towards amazing. the GoPro one. Until that one came out the other day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The like... GoPro one was great until DJI hit it. Yeah. GoPro until they went, had like oh, four, there you go. Had like four days where everybody was like, ooh, and then you're like, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right. Let's see. Uh, what I57 says, how do we share our photos at the end of the walk? So that's interesting. We are using a, a different method this year. So we have a contest partner, which is ViewBug. So ViewBug, they are in the business of running photo contests, right? And so they came on as our partner, and they are going to run all the contest side of it. Now, I'm still the judge and all that stuff, except for the for the People's Choice Award. But they have a really nice back end and a really good way for doing all this. So once the walk is over, we'll send out everybody details and where to yep. share them and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, but it's ViewBug is our partner for the for the contest and stuff. So we'll be seeing a lot of the images on ViewBug. Okay, well that that makes sense, and I think that answers the question from Wayne Young twenty. He says uh, Kelby one on Facebook should put up a photo walk page so that we can share photos. Uh, I don't right. I don't know that that would work as well as the, well, uh, it is, the contest. It's going to be the you you go to the ViewBug. Uh, contest and that's where you can upload uh the people's choice award is like you can upload any image okay and then um there's the uh walk leader and the walker contest and yeah uh, like scott said we're sending out that link sometime this weekend yeah to everybody yeah hey hey, look i have a slider hold on i'm trying to do slider effects nice that that works that's that new laptop slider that that particular sliding it down my laptop. That particular slider makes your hand look giant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does it? Yeah. yeah, I saw your hand in there. Oh, that was mostly scary. Now it, All right, so now it's uh, Drew, sliding that way. Drew Kimmel says, "I like the idea of giving yourself a challenge at the photo walk. I think I'm going to do this. It's been a year or two since I participated, so definitely do that, yeah. Drew. Thanks for sharing." Uh, Johan has another comment. I am doing the photo walk with Frank Dorhoff. 
one of the best. Oh, wow. One of the best teachers will learn a lot, even though it's a photo walk. So, yeah, that, that'll be a lot of fun. I saw a picture of. Well, that's a great opportunity. Did you see the picture of Frank on Facebook this week? He's in some kind of hotel where the door was really small and his head was actually higher than the door. <laughs> He's very tall. He's, He's a, tall. He is tall. a big guy. He said he feels like a giant, but he should feel like a giant all the time anyway. He's a all big the guy. Time, yeah. Uh, Pretty much, yeah. Yep. Uh, Phyllis Counts Hansen says, Scott, please make your walks. Photo open photos, photos open to the public yeah. so that we can enjoy Venice. I'm sure you'll post well, something I, I, for your trip. Oh right? I'll, yeah. Oh, when I come back, I'm going to do a uh, I'm going to do a uh, webcast. When I get back, I'll do a webcast about the trip. You know, usually after my photo walks, I come back and I give you a trip report, right? I, okay. You know, talk about where to shoot and share images and all. So that's coming up. Uh, I think the week after. Week after. Okay. So like. And that would be next week. I'm yeah. not sure. It's soon. Okay. How do you pronounce this next one? P R D. How do you pronounce something? That? London. It's Peter. Is it Peter? It's Peter it's from Peter. London. Peter it's the from other London. Peter. Okay. Not Peter Treadway. It's the other Peter. The, okay. So it says. I don't know why people do this to me. I don't. I don't speak other languages. Bonasera. Yep. Scott. Bonasera, yeah, it's kind did of I like, say it right? Good day. Yeah. It's like, you know. Bonasera. It's a greeting. It's it's a nice greeting. Very good. Thank you. Matt's, um, Matt's asking from, about a hashtag yeah. for tagging the photos for the photo walk. Um, I the hashtag of the photo walk is WWPW2016. PW2016. WWPW2016. WWPW? Yeah, Worldwide Photo Worldwide Photo Walk, walk 2016. Very good. Um, Dick says, Scott, what cameras and lenses did you take? We already covered that. Uh, just real quick, go back through that. You got the 5D4 on uh, theft. I'm loan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, which right. which lenses? Right. Well, I took three because I'm, I'm, you know, we're not on vacation. Uh, 14 millimeter f2.8. I've got a 70 to 200 f2.8 and a uh, 24 to 70. I got three lenses with me, and I got some filters. I brought some ND filters and different stuff. Okay. And nothing Lauren, too, nothing Lauren, too exciting. Lawrence asking if you're going to do a Periscope during your Venice walk. I'm, I mean, you probably do a Facebook Live, right? Or would you? I'll do, I'm going to do a Facebook Live, yes, I absolutely. I'm definitely going to do a Facebook Periscope? Live. Or are you still doing Periscope? I'd stop doing Periscope. Yeah. yeah. Like, the numbers were so low on Periscope. Periscope. Loved it when that was the only game in town. But like I would do a, a Periscope and I would get, you know, 300, 400 people to watch. And I would go and do, you know, Facebook and get 18,000. And you're like, I'm not going to do them both. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. I'm gonna, you know, and the other thing was that everybody's on Facebook. That's why the numbers are so high. Sure. You're already on Facebook. With Periscope, you have to actually go and get a piece of software. You have mm -hmm. to go create an account. You have to, it's not easy oh, for people to find, there. you yeah. know, yeah. It's, it, it's just, it's just more complicated. <laughs> it's great technology. I liked it. But at, at a certain point you go, how many platforms am I going to broadcast live on per day? <laughs> if I have to pick one, it's going to be Facebook. Yep. Yeah. Now, uh, next comment is from Gabriel Hernandez, and he's sharing too much information. He says he's sneaking into the jobs restroom to watch the grid. <laughs> um, I, I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> well, oh, goodness. OK, guys, everybody should sneak to the restroom to watch the grid. <laughs> we got to take a quick break. We will be right back after this brief message. Stick around. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to 10 Essential Techniques Every Landscape Photographer Needs to Know. My name is Scott Kelby, and we're on location in beautiful Cannon Beach, Oregon. So we're right on the Oregon coastline, and it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous day. And it's a perfect home for what we're going to be doing in this class. And we're going to be covering an awful lot. We're going to be covering everything from gear, from camera settings, for accessories, how to set everything up for maximum success, and we have a lot to cover. Come with us on this journey as we take you through the entire process to help you make the best landscape photos you've ever taken.
Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here. I want to invite you to the latest installment in my series that's called Lighting Recipes. Now this recipe is on fashion, how to light for fashion. We're going to do three different looks. We have Rosina helping us here in the studio. We're going to do everything from full length to close up, different looks. We're using grids, we're using soft boxes, we're using all kinds of fun stuff. And you can only see it here on Kelby One. Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here, and I want to tell you about my newest course on advanced compositing and finishing effects. Now, what we're going to be doing is going through the entire process. We're going to be selecting and extracting a subject, building a background element, and we're going to be adding lighting and particle effects to create a really dramatic look. So, we're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to learn a lot of really cool things, and be sure to check it out exclusively at KelbyOne.com. And we are back and just in time to say good night to our good friend, Scott Kelby. Scott is uh, just worn out tired and it's a after it's 1052 at night where you are, Scott, ready to go to sleep. Thank you so much for spending some time with oh, us. On a, look at Johan's oh, yeah. comment there. <laughs> Yeah, what did Johan say? Like, how jet lagged are how you? Jet -lag <laughs> yeah, Johan says, how jet lagged are you at this moment? Uh, doing okay? Actually, I, I feel okay, but I'm, I'm really, 30 seconds after I'm done here, I will be asleep. I'm going to zonk because we're getting up really early to shoot tomorrow. And we got a busy day of driving all over in our Mini Cooper. So if you see a blue Mini Cooper driving through the Dolomites, it's me and Jeff. Very good. I'd take a picture of it. I would. We have. We were taking pictures of everything. Thanks. Thanks <laughs> yeah, so much for joining thanks. us on your show, Scott. Yeah, right. <laughs> we appreciate Yay. it. Dialing in from Europe and uh, very cool. And thanks for inviting me to come to the show and talk with my friend oh, Eric about uh, geeky camera stuff. So as soon as you hang up, we're going to talk about camera stuff. All right. Well, thank you, Larry. Good seeing you again, Eric. Thanks yeah. very much. You too. And uh, we'll hope, hopefully see some of the people watching. Yep. Uh, Saturday, everybody, a very, very safe, happy, and fun walk. Hope you get lots of great pictures. Yep. Take care, awesome. Scott. See safe soon. travels. See you guys. Cheers. Oh, thank you, Scott Kelby, for uh, coming into the grid yeah. from the other side from of the world. the grid. Yeah. yeah. That was very cool. Uh, Fran Hughes has a question to uh, close out the show here in the last few minutes. Question for Larry and Eric. Best tips for street photography for this weekend's photo walk? I don't know. Uh, I, you know, honestly, for street photography, the best thing that, I, that I've that i is usually to the gear you take, if you're less obtrusive, you know, if you've got this huge yeah. lens, this huge stuff, people honestly, especially when I'm traveling, especially in foreign countries, like you check out this big gear, this big lens, and people start going, why, is that, why are they taking my picture? Right. Where I've got awesome shots with this because it's like people think I'm Snapchatting or something. Sure. So, yeah, the, uh, the secret to good street photography, or if you're talking about capturing pictures of people especially, yeah. um, capturing people in the middle of something either like um, moments like uh you know like candids like you know yeah. just street and, and you know? it's nice if you have um the ability you know you're just holding the camera in your hand it's not hanging around your neck mm -hmm. and if there's like a 50 millimeter lens on it yep so nice little yep. 50 and you bring it up and t uh, snap off a quick picture and um, maybe even smile at the person as they're walking yeah, exactly. by. Uh, exactly. it, it's, it becomes a non-issue. It's non-threatening. Yeah, but exactly. you pull out the tripod, the longer lenses, the, yeah. even the the uh, uh, the neck strap. You know, so if you have the strap ra yeah, wrapped the around your wrist, the less intrusive, the less scary yeah. you look. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the big giant camera bodies and uh, uh, high speed burst shooting yeah. scares the crap out of people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. What's going on? All right, so um, we got a few minutes left, and there were a few other things that we yeah, were going to talk I mean, about. We could talk about so. I mean, we did talk about like, the drones. That's pretty cool news on those drones. Um, you know, um, we were talking about that uh, SanDisk came up with that one terabyte card. You saw that? That's, that is so funny. Um, I, saw, I saw it, it show up in my Facebook feed from Lisa Snyder. She posted, mm -hmm. hey, look, SanDisk just came out with a one terabyte card. And so my comment on Lisa's post was because losing 2,000 pictures on a 256 gigabyte card isn't enough. <laughs> when your card that's, goes that's exactly bad. exactly my thing. It's like, I don't know why you'd want as a photographer right that big of a card because yeah i mean 
cards go bad sometimes and you know it's just mitigating your risk yeah you know now, now, i could see for video like we talk about like right. if you're shooting like 4k 8k footage you know sure. having that one terabyte but of course you know if you you know speak and handle it you know if you're doing you'd have to be doing some kind of like uh pro res or something like that but yeah i mean i just it's cool that we have it i'm just not sure I, i'm fine at like 128, 256, sure. I'm fine there. Well, and I think so many pro shooters buy the smaller cards. They buy the smaller SD cards, 32 and 64, yeah. and they just keep swapping them. I right. remember the very first time I heard that was from David Zeiser, and he said, if I'm shooting a wedding, I'm swapping cards all the time because if I have a card go bad, I don't lose the wedding. I lose a section of it. Mm -hmm. And if uh, if a card goes bad and I have a giant card and the whole wedding is on it's it, on, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. you know that's your that's your yeah. whole job, that's your whole career. So uh, I agree. Well, a lot of times when we're shooting around here, we don't shoot with anything bigger than thirty two for that reason, you know. And really, I mean, you know, it's just because you can just swap them out. Yeah, just keep on swapping them. All right, what else did we talk about um, that is a little bit interesting? Raw image support on an iPhone. Yeah, raw Does that image matter? support. I think it's really cool. Well, tell me why. I think it's cool just because it gives me the ability to actually take my iPhone shots to that next level. You know, it's, it's basically, it's almost like having, remember the uh, point and shoots that Canon and Nikon came out, like the G5, was what sure. like a G10 now or G20 yeah. or something like that. <laughs> it's like that, where you've got that power of that raw image, but yet in a small, you know, something that's With you pocket. all the time all is the, time. the key. And that's the, that's the key for me. This is just me that it's a camera that's always with me all the time. That's it. Yeah, it makes, so. it, makes a difference. Yeah. Um, well, Google Glass won't die this week. They came out with that Snapchat, came out with those <laughs> sunglasses that Google Glass just won't die. Yeah, Google Glass was going to be the next big thing, and then people started getting paranoid about being yeah. videoed. So now with, we got these things. Yeah. Spectacles. Yeah, so I'm I'm curious, you know, maybe maybe Snapchat can pull it off where maybe. Google Glass didn't because Google Glass was bi-directional. It was so many different things. It was that full computer experience in the uh, glasses. Yeah. And this is going to be a little bit more this social media. This is basically media. the pictures and video inside the glasses. But it only takes 10 second worth of video. So yeah. it's it's Snapchat basically. So I think well, it's, it's actually now Snap instead of they don't call themselves Snapchat. Anymore. Yeah, they changed the name of the company. Potentially a little bit less threatening than Google Glass. I think people were kind of freaking out uh, security yeah. wise with Google Glass. Yeah. And I don't think that the same types of people would be into this that were into Google Glass. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, and it's a really cool angle. If you look at the like videos and pictures from it, I mean, it's a really sure. cool angle, you know, for people to capture. So I could see it kind of catching on, you know, maybe not with photographers, but it'll catch on with the millennials. Okay, um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this to, this starts to lead me down the path of uh, on body cams, like on the police yeah, and yeah, stuff like that. We'll, we'll go there. Yeah, no, okay, we won't yeah. cover that. Yeah. Um, all right, so we were we were talking about a couple of other things. And one of the things that I saw at the National Association of Broadcasters Convention this year is HDR video. Uh -huh. And what's interesting is in the Sony booth that I was doing an interview with some Sony folks, they were talking about HDR video. And then I went to the Canon booth and they were talking about HDR video. Nothing to do with one another. Right. And, and different technologies. And, and really what it ultimately comes down to is in video capture, uh, they're expanding the dynamic they're range. Extending the dynamic range is all they're doing. I mean, somehow. Yeah, somehow. Yeah. And, and using different technologies and using different development processes in camera for what it is right. that they're doing. Um, now, the one from Canon I know a little bit more about. Uh, for example, like the one with the 5D4. And I actually really like what they're that doing. That one's probably the closest to what I could see where, uh, yeah, that is. A, doing something to extend the dynamic range like and it's legitimately pretty clever. yeah you know? it's pretty clever so what they're doing they've got a camera that can capture 1080p at 60 frames a second and so what they do is they dial it back to give you a 1080p 30 frames per second finished video but they still shoot at 60p so what they're doing is every other frame that's being shot mm -hmm. is being shot at a reduced exposure and so those blown out highlights are being brought back into um, a, a better 
visible range. And so then what it does is it on the fly, I mean, there's no like post-processing time or anything. This is happening as it's capturing the video. It's capturing 1080p 30 finished video from 1080p 60 normal mm -hmm. exposure and then every other frame being is that, under. that yeah. underexposed. Yeah. And it takes those bright highlight areas that are blown out and, and it reduces that. And the finished product looks great. It is, it looks great, yeah. So, and that's that's a, that's the interesting, you know, where I have seen it really in video used very cool is to actually shoot bracketed exposures in a time lapse, you know, yeah. where it stills and they're actually doing a time, it's still time lapse, which is different than nowadays. They have the time lapse built into the camera that they shoot video time lapse. Sure. These are like, you know, people actually taking the bracketed exposure. Okay, so that's it's like the it. difference with intervalometer shooting. Yep. So they're doing bracketed on an intervalometer. Yep. And then in post-processing, putting that together in video Correct. to become an HDR. Now, how cool is it going to be if we can get to the point where we can do it in the camera uh -huh. and then produce the time lapse in the camera in HDR? That would be awesome. That's what's got to come out next year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. there, there's always some goal, some path to work for. Uh, because that's really what it all is. You know, HDR kind of, you know, the, the term gets that bad rap, right? Sure. But, I mean, all it is is extending the dynamic range. It's making it look like more stops of light, you know, where you can see more detail. And that's all it's doing. I mean, it's and, just it gets a bad rap. And being able to do it in video is, is especially helpful. Uh, we have a couple questions that have come in. Fran is asking, does Eric have Twitter? I'm always wanting to know more about oh, video. I got a Twitter, but I don't use it. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't do anything on it. But, I, you know, I've probably uh, more on Facebook, but, you know, you're probably going to get my rants and raves about <laughs> stuff you don't want to hear about. Peter's asking about a best DIY gadget to take on a photo walk. Well, it kind of depends, Peter, on, on what it is that you're going for. I'm trying to think of some things that I've taken. Um, because I do so many of those DIY things. I'm trying to think what I've taken. You know what I take? <laughs> I take, this was one of my very first Larry's Cheap Shots things. Um, I love the hood loop, the hood mm -hmm. man hood yep. loop. And uh, I love that for any, anything that I'm doing outdoors. And so what I did was I got a uh, key back like the janitor keys that they carry the big key ring and they mm -hmm. pull it out and it's on a long chain. Yeah. Well, they make one that is a string, but it's, yeah. it's like high quality fiber. So it's not going to break. And so I put my hood loop on that. And so one of the problems that I always had with the hood man hood loop is you wear it on a thing around your neck and your camera's on a thing around your neck and they're kind of bumping yeah, into like each a, other and fighting exactly. each other. And so, uh, <coughs> I put it on a, uh, a a key ring, a retractable key ring. So that would be the one That's thing that, that I would That's take on a, <laughs> I like that. You, you know, and uh, they actually came out with that. Um, oh, yeah? Hoodman actually came out with one uh, from the same people, the Keyback brand people, and they redesigned it a little bit and made it just for them. I told them they should call it the Larry, Lariat. This should be the Larry Becker. Or, or yeah. Larry's Back or something yeah. like that. But they go, yeah, nobody knows who you are. <laughs> so we, we're not going to call it that. Uh, Matt has a question. Uh, best non-camera lens item to take. Um, camera bag. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, if you need to take a camera bag, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I actually think the, the idea of a loop is actually a, a very cool thing to take because a lot of times we're out on these photo walks and we're out at non-ideal times. Right. Um, Bright middle of the day, because sunshine. Because a lot of times when people can get together and all that stuff, it's kind of a different time. So, yeah. you know, that is a good thing to take. Um, but if you don't have that, I mean, I, I couldn't, what would you think? I don't know. Uh, it, well, it depends matters on where you are. Depends on yeah. what you're shooting, yeah. and, and maybe maybe you bring a, a reflector if you're shooting course, people. Yeah, you, know, you don't need a the loop like that. <laughs> I mean, it's a piece of a piece of paper will work. You know, we're just yeah, lens shade or just yeah. shade. Yeah, yeah. But I love the hood loop. That's, I do. I love that's the hood loops cool. too. Yeah. Um, what resolution does that spectacle thing? I actually don't mm. know. They haven't come out with many details <laughs> on it. It's kind of like more of that, uh, you know concept proof of concept right now it, it, they haven't really come out with a lot of details on it so i know it's going to be like 120 bucks i believe or oh, something really? around there um so i imagine it's not going to shoot that crazy it's probably going to be it's going to be tuned towards 
using it with Snapchat. Social That's what media. It's gonna be. It's gonna be for social media. It's gonna be tuned for using Snapchat. But again. Uh, that's a lot of like we were talking about this before. I'm I'm big into shooting the the 360 video and 360 pictures now. I have the Theta and I love that Theta, you know, and what that's producing. But you know, it's just it's different mediums, you know, to display your work, you know. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with stuff like this. Yeah, we've um, Eric and I had a, a really great 45 minute conversation before we came on, and we were just talking about all these neat. Um, technologies that have rolled out in just the past few months. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I want to pick one last one to talk about, uh, for me anyway, and that is the 4K workflow. Mm -hmm. This is something that was introduced, I saw for the first time uh, a year and a half ago, two years ago at NAB in the Canon booth. And what they're talking about is 4K video. Mm -hmm. And 4K video captures still frames that are the equivalent of an 8.8 .8 megapixel still. Exactly. times however many frames per second. So 30 frames per second. So let's say you have a camera like Scott does, the 5D4, right. and you're shooting 4K at 30 frames a second. You could shoot video, 4K video, and then take a freeze frame that's 8.8 .8 megapixels, and you can print those big. You can print those 20 that's by 30. That's what's crazy about it, if you really think about it. Like, 8 megapixels, okay, if we go back, there was a time, probably mid-2000s, that an 8 megapixel... DSLR digital like you know a, a Nikon D2 maybe or right. the 1D I, I forget which one but they were like every professional photographer was using it and it was like oh my gosh 8 megapixel image this is awesome this is so clear sure now you have an 8 megapixel image that's 30 or 60 frames per second so think about like shooting sports or high action being able to capture something and being able to pull out a frame like forget like having a camera you think of uh, the 5d mark uh four right it shoots right. uh f it shoots 4k at 30 right what does it shoot? 5D4 is 4K 30. Right. So you literally have a 30 frames per second still sports photography camera sure. at, a, at 8 megapixels. I mean, it's not full, but 8 megapixels a lot of times That's will huge. be just fine. That's huge. And one of the things that I'm thinking would be fun with that is lightning storms. Oh, yeah. Because I've tried out those lightning triggers, and they're yeah. cool, but but it's it's an extra piece of gear, and it's a little bit yeah. of a hassle. And if you're not dedicated to taking lightning storm pictures all the time, but imagine just flip on the camera and point it in the general direction Especially of the lightning storm. We're at. Yeah, Central Florida, <laughs> every, we're the lightning capital every, of the world. Every night. <laughs> <laughs> it could be kind of fun. You know, um, I, I really do enjoy the grid. There is yeah. a variety of uh, topics that we talk about here on the grid. Thank mm -hmm. you guys so much for joining us to talk about the photo walk with Scott. And Eric, thanks for coming in. Yeah, and absolutely, it's absolutely. Been a, been thanks, a lot of fun talking about gear. Um, even before we did the show. So <laughs> we're going to wrap it up and thank you guys for joining us on the grid. Uh, Scott free. Well, it's not really Scott free. No, uh, Scott free here in uh, Florida, but uh, <laughs> Scott was with us for a little while. He's probably sound asleep right now. Oh yeah. He's out. All right. We're going to sign off this week. All right. Join us again next week and be sure to watch Scott's blog because after the photo walk, he's going to be doing the uh, summary of his photo walk. Oh, and, yeah. and you'll definitely well, see. Well, that's what for the contest, you want to right. hear about the contest and stuff like that. And we usually, you know, a lot of people uh, submit images of their walk. And uh, well, we got that video category now, so it should be interesting to see what people put together for the video category. I agree. I'm interested. Yeah. yeah. It, it, and now on the video category, I'm sure it's captured on the walk, but potentially post processed. Oh, uh, yeah. It has to be edited. edited. Sure. Or it doesn't have to be. Yeah. I would advise it being it, you know. <laughs> yeah, not unlike processing our images. You could take yes, them straight out of yes. the camera, but. Um, okay. So oh, yeah. We're giving we away a book. book. Giveaway? Yeah. So we're going to give away the Lightroom Mobile book. Um, it's a great book by Scott. I love this. What I love about Scott's books is they're uh, like, well, especially these are like one page, one tip, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And. Um, I, I learn great like this, where it's like, I just need to know one thing. I go right there, I read it, done. Okay, so, so how do we do a giveaway on So this? they can go to that website right there, kelby1.com forward slash webcast hyphen contest. Go down there, select the show, select put in your name, put in your email address, put in that stuff. Say you're not a uh, robotic person and uh, hit the submit. Very cool. And they could win this book. Yep. 
and I'll sign it. <laughs> well, in that case. Uh, yeah, that actually reduces the value of the book. Uh, <laughs> so it won't go for as much on eBay. All right. Uh, so we've done the giveaway. We've done. Oh, well, you know, we got a new class wow. coming out this week on Kelby what? One. What? What? It's what? a really cool class uh, from Roy Ashton, and I think it's probably going to come out on Friday, though. It's not going to come out tomorrow. I think it's coming out on Friday. But um, on uh, music, uh, it's uh, he's going all over how to uh, use music in your uh, photography workflow, like how to use it for, like in montages and stuff like that. Very cool. Really cool. I mean, he, he knows. I mean, yeah, you know, obviously he um, works with Triple Scoop. Okay. Um, music, but it's a class just about how to use your uh, music in your work. So and and that makes such a big difference. Oh, I've makes, seen I've uh, seen so many difference. slideshows at uh, Photoshop World yeah. where the music the music's what makes, makes the images yeah. that much more breathtaking. And it's the same thing with video. I mean, a lot of times, I mean, a lot of times, not saying, but especially with those montages or those recaps and stuff like that, the music's what makes it. Sure. So it's very important. And he goes over a lot of cool stuff in the class. So Okay, and that rolls out Friday over at Kelby One. I think so, Friday. Yeah. Very if good. not, it'll be out tomorrow. But okay, maybe Friday. tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. tomorrow or Friday. You'll get an email if you're a Kelby One member. Yes, I get those all the time. I love going to uh, to Kelby One and looking at classes, especially when I've just completed them. <laughs> oh, and if you, you're into HDR, that Aurora HDR 2017 uh, is in pre-order right now. You can save a bunch of money if you go there. Okay, so for anybody that doesn't know, Aurora HDR is from? Uh, Mac Fun. So right now it's only a Mac product. They're developing a Windows version. I don't know when, don't know how, don't know when they're coming out with it. but. It is awesome. I, this is what I use when I'm processing uh, HDR. So, Very good. Yeah. So multiple. Yeah, they're exposures. actually they're they're going to pre-order. I think you look at you can. Uh, it's only 89 bucks right now in pre-order, so pretty cool. And you get a bunch of bonus stuff. So, and among pretty, the bonuses, looks oh, like a look Kelby you, one. You can get a Kelby yeah, one membership Kelby if one. you're not a member. Nice. Yeah. You know, so really cool. The the one I love in here is batch processing. That's going to be really cool. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? That. Did I miss anything else? No. I think you're good. good? Okay. Yeah. I think we're All good. Right. Thank you guys for coming in. Thanks for watching The Grid. Thank you, Eric, for well, inviting thanks, me here. Glad to be here. Good luck. Make sure that you sign up to win Scott's book. And we will see you again next week on The Grid every Wednesday. Adios.